Hey guys, it's Ross over at The Daily Jaws, back again with another exclusive interview. Today, I'm talking to two really important people in the world of shark conservation. I'm speaking to Charlie Morris and Frankie Ciparoni, who are producing a fantastic new shark documentary called The Last Shark. Now, before we dive into the topic, I have to make clear that this is nothing to do with the 1981 brilliant Italian Jaws ripoff of the same name, The Last Shark. When I say brilliant, I'm obviously being sarcastic. It's a terrible movie, but you should definitely watch it if you want a bit of a laugh. But anyway, guys, please take some time out to welcome Frankie and Charlie to The Daily Jaws. Guys, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for having us. Well, guys, obviously you are now working on this documentary uh, called The Last Shark, and it's a very exciting time for you because you're premiering tomorrow. Uh, how are you feeling? So we actually pre premiere Tuesday the 7th, um, okay. and honestly, we could not be more excited. The community, I'm here in South Africa, so I apologize for the lighting. Uh, just as we hit record, we did hit load shedding here, so that's why I don't have any background light at the moment. Um, but yeah, we couldn't be more excited. The community momentum that's been built around this movie here is just so surreal so not only do we have the premiere this tuesday but it's followed by close to 16 screenings already lined up not only in cape town but across south africa that's amazing uh charlie could you tell us a little bit about the last shark um wow that might be too broad of a phrased question <laughs> <laughs> okay let me rephrase what is the last shark about um gosh i hate to defer to frankie but i feel like frankie has such a better answer because she's yeah i'm sorry you threw me a softball and i'm chucking it over to frankie <laughs> okay frankie, it, frankie let's pass that softball to you frankie what uh, can you tell us about this fantastic documentary the last shark so the last shark is really an investigative documentary looking into the disappearance of great white sharks from south africa's coast I mean, as we know, South Africa used to be known as the great white shark capital of the world, and especially this town just two hours east of Cape Town called Hans Bay was really the mecca of great white sharks. And they used to bring in over $4 million a year alone, just this tiny town in ecotourism for great white shark cage diving. So people from truly all over the world would come here just to see, have the chance to see great white shark. Um, however, since 2014, they've seen not only like a decline in sightings, but in more recent years, a complete absence. So they've gone years without seeing a great white shark. This year in Hans Bay, they had around seven sightings, but that's pretty, pretty crazy to think, uh, considering the fact that in like 2011 and previous years, uh, shark diving operators would go out and see over 30 individuals a day. So not only are we investigating the disappearance of this majestic and beautiful creature, but we're also calling for a transformation of the KwaZulu-Natal Shark Boards, which are is a government organization that lies on more the, the eastern coast of South Africa, so kind of closer to Mozambique, and along, around like 300 kilometers of this coastline, they have over 37 netted beaches and 177 drum lines. So we're calling for a transformation of this organization to change to protect both humans and sharks. And also just, you know, an overall perception change of sharks for, for us to humans to really see them for these critical creatures that we need for our ecosystems to give them a more respect, the respect that they deserve. And what, and what I would add to that, Frankie rounds that out so perfectly. And I was thinking, additionally, this movie is um like we want people to fall in love with sharks and we really sort of take head we 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 kind of tackle head on um you know how much we're afraid of sharks as humans hmm. um and we kind of dive into that oh that's a great pun we dive into that in, in the story by talking to shark experts shark scientists people who just love sharks period are in this film. I think there's 13 different interviews. Uh, I mean, there's 13 individual people who are kind of spread throughout the movie who talk about everything from how they fit into the food web, how the ecosystem depends on 
apex level predators and what happens if the sharks go. Hmm. And then equally, we talk about people who just talk about the beauty of sharks and they've spent their lifetime diving with white sharks and they swim with them, you know, right out there in the open, which surprises a lot of people, you know, um, everyone probably, most people probably assume that you only hang out great whites when you're in a cage. Um, we've got some fairly legendary people in the movie as well um, that are well known in the shark world. Uh, so to me, it's sort of like, uh, it's a sort of like a love story for sharks. It's our, our, our homage to sharks and it just really explores the shark and human relationship and how we got to a point where we're at now, now where basically like something that I arrived at through working on the movie is I came into this story knowing nothing about sharks. I only knew one thing. I'm terrified of sharks. That's all I knew. Hmm. And then through spending time with the transcripts of the interviews, you know, I inherited all this footage from South Africa. Um, Frankie was there for the original filming, but I was not. So I was brand new to this whole topic. And kind of what I came up to real realizing through working on the movie is like this whole whole problem exists these nets are only out in the water for one reason and one reason only it's because people are terrified of sharks and they feel like i can't go out in that water unless there's a shark net and somehow for south africa they're like we don't care if all the other countries in the world except australia don't have shark nets we need shark nets or i'm not going out there and so it really explores that that fear and um, we hope that we've created something that really makes people go, you know what, we need sharks and I need to get get on board with this. You know, like mm -hmm. even if I'm afraid of them, I have to support sharks because it's about the whole ecosystem. So, yeah, that's what I would say the movie is about. That's amazing. It, it, the thing is, like, throughout the course of the Daily Jaws, because we've been going now for about eight years, and we do get to speak to shark experts and docu documentary filmmakers and things, and and the passion really comes through. But what's really unique, I think, about your case, or your story, Charlie, is the fact that you didn't really know anything about sharks, and you were very much like many other people coming to the world of sharks, if you like. You were terrified of them. But through information, um, whether that's through documentary, studying books, speaking to experts, whatever – just through the knowledge, the ignorance starts to dissipate and you start to understand the true nature of, of these animals and, and their importance to the ecosystems, like you're saying, and things like yeah. that. And there are yeah. so many different threats that can, that impacts not just sharks, but the oceans in general. But obviously you guys have picked a very specific uh, threat to, to, to these animals. What is it that inspired you to sort of try and tackle this problem sort of head on rather than say tackle something else? <laughs> So as Charlie mentioned, I was here originally for filming um, two years ago. Um, the original director is from Hans Bay in Cape Town. And what happened was he was working for Sea Shepherd, um, particularly on the Vaquita campaign for about three years. And he came back home to Cape Town and realized, oh, my God, there hasn't been a white shark sighting here in over two years. Like he was felt like you know a piece of his heart was missing there's been this whole problem and he's been ignored like missing out on it by by working on the other side of the world so he called me up um because I have, have a lot of experience in marine research and I started just kind of like digging into stuff and looking at what what is going on what is going on and we decided to really kind of call for the transformation of the shark boards particularly because it all begins with perception and the reason that I you know what ended up happening is after filming the original director got his dream job he's now doing incredible work he's working in anti-poaching in Kruger National Park he's like protecting the rhinos and elephants out there um, every day in the bush and so last year I ended up going back to Sea Shepherd and I was witnessing the shark bycatch and mortality firsthand on the commercial fishing vessels and it was like man if we can't even if people think that like have this perception that you know they need a net to even get into the ocean and that the ocean is theirs and not the shark's home or you know the whales the dolphins every everything like other living creatures home how are we even going to be begin to get them to care about what's going on in the commercial yeah. world in the shark fin trade and all these other massive issues that not only sharks but you know a lot of creatures in in the ocean are really facing so 
it really starts kind of with the nets. It starts with changing perception and education. And so that's kind of why we 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 targeted the nets and and we're asking for this this policy change. And and if I you don't mind me jumping in here, Ross, to add to that, I think and you'll notice this is how things go. I pretty much always defer to Frankie. She's like the Uber director and I'm the co-director because, you know, I mean, Frankie was just sitting there knowing there's a hard drive in South Africa with all this info on it. And it sat there derelict for over a year. Mm. And, and and Frankie really just said, okay, but this, we, we got to make this happen. I got to find an editor. And so um, she's really the one that works in the ocean space and knows the most about it. So mm. I always defer to her first, but I'd like to add that, um, you know, it was a tricky movie to make because, you know, a lot of the people that were in interviewed were like, well, it's not just the nets, it's the commercial fishing, it's the illegal fishing, it's the illegal shark fishing trade, it's long liners, it's everything. Why make a movie just about that? And what Frankie and I decided was, well, number one, a movie with all those topics is going to get this long and be too long and too deep in the weeds. And out of all those other things, this is the one thing that is ridiculous and can we can do something about. There's a net right out there on the tourist beaches. All you got to do, pull that net out of the water and change policy and things change. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's not hard to do. But when you think about commercial fishing, wow, that feels pretty hard. That feels like really complicated. But so we just decided to really narrow the focus down to this one topic and, and hope that that can change. Yeah. Um, also, it's less overwhelming for the viewer where they're like, oh, one topic, one call to action, change yeah. change the thing with the nets. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think it's a really smart thing to do because as we said before, you know, there's a lot of um, threats, you know, very, very real threats. So, you know, it's not just, as you say, affecting sharks, but, you know, the, the ecosystem as a whole. And I think, but particularly that what sort of separates sharks, I think probably more than any other animal is what we've been sort of alluding to and talking about. Um, which is the perception of these animals. And yeah, I, obviously, Charlie, you're coming in from a very specific place. You know, you're very terrified of sharks and, and, and not particularly educated about it, whereas Frank, obviously, you're a marine biologist. So you're coming from the same uh, the same thing, but from completely different places, which brings me to probably the key question for my audience. Um, what are your thoughts on Jaws? And do you think you can be a Jaws fan and a shark lover at the same time? Oh, man. Let's just keep it going. You first, Frankie. <laughs> just gonna throw me under the bus every time, aren't you, Charlie? <laughs> throw you, you under the shark. First? <laughs> you want me to go first, Frankie? No, I can go first. Okay. I think you know it's so hard because <laughs> obviously Jaws has. We can't deny that Jaws has created a global fear. You know, like people who are landlocked like myself I mean I grew up in Chicago so nowhere near the ocean that was probably you know I would say Jaws was probably my first time you know seeing a shark or something like that I can't think of another time or another movie where I would have seen a shark um not so even Sharknado <laughs> not even Sharknado <laughs> I think it's tricky because when you see it young it does plant that seed and that's why so many of us have that fear is because it is such a media phenomenon and such a globally spread film. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, I won't lie, I love the Megalodon, but I love it because it's a ridiculous movie and it's just kind of funny, but it's the same as watching like another horror or ridiculous movie, you know, mm -hmm. like, and I think we need to, we need to view it as that rather than as, oh my gosh, this is what, you know, real sharks are like. And the other thing is, you know, we know how media can be so exaggerated, right? But it's interesting how with Jaws has created this, like the media has continued to play into this like global fear. And so, you, I mean, as you know, like shark attacks, you know, the, the annual statistics is there's five fatal shark attacks a year, right? Five fatal shark human incidences a year. But then there's 200,000 hip, hippo, or, I'm sorry, 2,000 hippo. Yes. Man, a little late for me. Yeah. Um, 
attacks to humans a year. There's there's so many other deaths. I mean, you're more likely to to die in a car, like or by a toaster than by a shark. So it's also interesting how because of Jaws, the media still really plays into this these shark attacks when it's really not that common at all. You know, for every shark, no, for every human that's killed by a shark, over 16 million sharks are killed by a human. So I think it's it's a really hard line to to draw for people. Um, but I mean, you don't see movies about spiders and you're like, well, okay, maybe you do, and you're and you're really scared, <laughs> but you don't see Sharknado, for example, or the Megalodon, and you're like, oh my God, this is real, you know? So we need to we need to to find that line of education for sure. But I, yeah. I do, I haven't seen Jaws in a while, but I have seen the Megalodon like quite a few times in the past year because it always gives me a good laugh. Uh, Charlie, so yeah, yeah, where do you stand on the whole Jaws shark lover kind of topic? Where do you, where's the line so, struggle so, for you? Um, well, your fans will like my answer. Jaws is a masterpiece of storytelling. I love Jaws. And Jaws is the reason why I am terrified to go into the ocean. Like I grew up bodyboarding and I didn't think about it much. Like it took a while to catch up with me, but I grew up bodyboarding in the Carolina coast here in the USA. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. Like summers were all about bodyboarding and body surfing. And I was really into it. And it was weird. It wasn't until I had kids and I saw my kids playing the ocean that I, I would literally just be scanning the entire time. Where's the fin? Where's the fins? Yeah. And I was like, I'd literally just be like, why did I watch Jaws? <laughs> um, so I think that what would be great that the media did is if it just somehow said, Jaws is storytelling fun, mm -hmm. but it is not a truth at all about sharks. But I really grew up thinking that's how great whites actually are. That's not just a movie. They just portrayed what sharks actually want to do, eat humans. Mm -hmm. That was my perception. And so like at this point through this movie, I've come all the way over to being like, yeah, I would swim with sharks. Like I would absolutely do it now. You know, if I ever make it over to South Africa, if we have funding and someone wants to take me out, I would absolutely do it as long as Frankie was there to watch my back. But I would go <laughs> and I would try it out. It, it's fascinating um, that, that you give that answer. The reason being is that we, and this was something that the author of Jaws also experienced, Peter Benchley, while he was still alive. It seems to be a really split audience in terms of fear and fascination. And yeah. if you watch Jaws as an adult, particularly as a parent, you really fear yeah. sharks. But the kids that watch Jaws, they are absolutely fascinated by sharks. They're absolutely, I mean, they they probably watch it for the blood and the guts and the gore, just as I did when I was little, but they're fascinated by yeah. sharks. And they think that these are amazing creatures. And I, and I think to Frankie's point and about the whole media thing, how it's particularly in the UK with our tabloid press, how everything is, whenever a shark is in the paper, it's the Jaws effect or it's a, a horror or it's a terror or whatever it is. And it's like, nothing happened. A shark happened to swim by and it was probably a harmless species because of where we are. But I think what happens is because of the the sensationalism around sharks, it's a very easy sell for a newspaper. Very, very easy. No, and as soon as you put something yeah. like that on, uh, you know, some kind of sensationalist headline or whatever, whenever you look on the BBC website or a news website, normally if there's a shark related story, it's normally in the top four or five stories that are being clicked on. So there's definitely something in there. Yeah. But you're right. I think the uh, one of the things that we try to do in some of the literature that we write about when it comes to shark stuff, um, we, rather than use the word shark attack, we use shark encounter because it's... It, that's kind of in the what it is, which absolutely. And um, recently there was a, 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 I think it was actually caught on uh, camera. Um, uh, sadly, a boy, I think it was about 20, 21 years old, got killed by a tiger shark in Egypt. And this was the, uh, it was a shark attack in a very similar area that happened, I think maybe a year or so ago. It was almost identical in terms of location and, and, and events. And people started sharing the video of this guy basically dying on camera. And we wrote a piece about... Yeah. That, that is just morally reprehensible. We shouldn't be doing that. You know, this is someone's son, someone's boyfriend or whatever. But it's very sensational. Yeah. And it's a very, very easy thing. So when you, people like yourself come along and go, right, well, we're going to, one, try and educate people about the reality of sharks and their behavior. We're also going to educate you on a very specific threat. I think it's just amazing, amazing work. And it's great to see so many people taking on these challenges and looking at these individual threats to sharks and hopefully, collectively educating a nation. And hopefully at some point we'll just go, Okay, enough's enough. Hashtag, 
and this is something we have to pose from time to time jaws is not a documentary it's an entertainment <laughs> yeah there is there is a little bit of creative license there and there is some you know some accuracy there you know research was done and stuff but you know there is a you know you have to understand that it's a movie but i think the tide is changing through the work of like people like yourself Something that popped in my head as you were talking is I believe this man's name is Joshua Slocum. It might have been Joseph Slocum, but um, around 1895, he sailed a boat around the world. He was the first known human to circumnavigate the whole globe in his sailboat. I believe it was called the Sea Spray or maybe just the Spray. He took off from around Nantucket. Mm -hmm. And I read his book in the last year. And what was really fascinating is this was before the movie Jaws existed. And in his memoir, Every time this guy comes across a shark, he goes out of his way to kill that shark. He hates sharks. And he, you can tell that most of the sailors he encounters all have the same view about sharks. I think for us as humans, this fear of sharks existed way before Jaws existed, actually. You know, um, I think that we're just super terrified of something that can just take us out of the water and, and possibly kill us easily. You know, um, it's just fascinating, though, that we don't hold the same fear about lions. You know, it's probably because we want to swim in the ocean. We don't want to swim in the desert where the lions are or the savanna. Mm -hmm. So it's just different, you know. Um, but yeah, so I was I was reading your threads uh, from your videos. I was reading a bunch of comments the other day, mm -hmm. and I was really surprised by how many people were saying that the movie Jaws turned them into conservationists and turned them into people who grew to love sharks. I was mm -hmm. just like, wow. And, that, and that's why I was, I mean, this was a while ago. Like I didn't reach out to you. You reached out to us actually through our website. I don't know how you found us. I just Googled but, the um, last shark team. I think there was something that came up in Google and literally, yeah, you're right. I just emailed just like, how can we help? That was yeah, it. Wild. That's all we needed to know. Yeah. Like I was looking over your... I was looking over your thing months ago and I even uh, talked to Frankie. I was like, Frankie, check this out. People who love Jaws now like say they like sharks. And I was like, this guy does this whole thing. So when you wrote to me, I was like, Frankie, this is the guy. <laughs> so it's pretty cool that we're talking. Oh, it's, it's, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's really crazy. We were checking, we were checking out your website at first and we were really looking into it because, especially because in our, in our film, we, one of our like, it's just one of our most amazing interview subjects, um, Shark Lady Kim, uh, a local cage diving operator and like shark conservationist here in, in South Africa, ended up doing work with Valerie Taylor. And so she talks a lot about her actually in the film. And, you know, amazing. it's just incredible. Like, and the, yeah. the conservation work that um, that Valerie I'm Taylor sorry. ended up doing. Yeah. <laughs> ended up doing after the film is also just absolutely incredible and our our interview subject um shark lady kim was there with her to and it was actually what they were testing was a electrical barrier to use instead of the shark nets and the shark nets are still there but you know mm. they really found like a valid solution and yeah. it's just such a shame that you know years later this this technology that could protect both humans and sharks is still not being used. And that was developed and tested here within South Africa. And it's not the only one. There's a number of other alternatives that have been tested and are working even within South African waters, yet these shark nets still, still there and the drum lines. And it's not only South Africa, it's also Australia. And that's why this film is especially important because the sharks here migrate all the way up to Australia's coast. So they are just facing threat after threat after threat. Yeah. And I think as well, there's, um, there's quite, it, 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 the, the argument about the whole nets versus sort of new technology, it kind of reminds me of the energy argument right now in terms of fossil fuels versus sort of green energy and things like that. It's like part of the reason I think why people maybe don't transition is one, they're maybe a little bit afraid of change potentially it could be that there's a massive amount of infrastructure that would need to change in order to make that sort of transition complete but also i think a lot of it just comes down to there's a lot of people making probably quite a lot of money 
um, from these nets or from these methods or, or whatever it is. And therefore, no one really wants to rock the boat. And we're not just sort of shouting corruption or anything like that, for sure. But, you know, these are things that I think are genuine problems that are, that are uh, exacerbating the problems or the direct threats facing sharks. And I think that because um, I had, I was very lucky. I got to speak to Valerie Taylor a couple of years ago about her documentary, um, the, the playing oh. the sharks, which is, yeah, honestly, it was a last minute thing. But it was only because the producer of that documentary followed the Daily Jaws, and we've sort of said, listen, we want to speak to Valerie and get the word out about this amazing documentary that she's making. Because she wow. said, cool, we'll get you a twenty minute slot. We ended up talking for like nearly forty minutes, which was incredible. But Valerie wow. was saying the same thing about policy. And it's not just about the actual threat, it's the the other aspects that impact those threats and that enable those threats to continue. And, um, you know, it's a fresh thinking, fresh perspective or uh, a change in, in politician or, or whatever it needs to take to really make the, the, these changes, which is why films like yours allow the public to see the reality and then hopefully lobby and pressure the people that need to be lobbied and pressured in order to, to actually make the change or else step aside and let someone else step up who is actually serious about this problem you know something that occurred to me last night like like now that the movie so i've exported the movie to south africa the 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 projectionist is getting it ready so suddenly my work has just dropped off and i'm having finally like time to have other thoughts and other realizations that aren't on a you know video editing software timeline and one of the things that occurred to me is so like policies that support profit um commercial trawling, those things. Sharks are being killed by those measures because people are trying to make money, right? So you've got people trying to make a living versus conservation. Mm. Something that occurred to me about this specifically these nets, these gill nets off the coast, it's it's one of the only instances where we're specifically saying as humans, we're going to kill these sharks because we're afraid. And so that makes great whites and other sharks the only species on the planet that we're killing simply because, not because they're food, not because we're trying to profit, because we're just afraid of sharks. Mm. I was just like, wow, that, that's a lot. That's a huge environmental impact just because you're scared of something. And I was just like, wow, we're really fearful creatures, you know, like... But, but like, fear is a powerful weapon, isn't it? Particularly on yeah, a population, exactly. and you've got a, a media machine that keeps perpetuating that yeah. uh, really unfair image of, of a particular animal. Uh, so, yeah. where is, where is the film at the moment in terms of uh, process? Kind of, where, where are you guys? Well, I exported. I'll take this one first for a change, Frankie. I, I finished it about yesterday at nine a.m. I I exported it uh, to the projectionist at the premiere location in uh, the theater in Cape Town, and um, and there's an unlisted version on YouTube that Frankie can use for screenings and stuff. But basically, um, yeah, it's done, and and now, yeah, now we're just doing tons of outreach and and Frankie's just got a whole, well, Frankie can tell you about all the stuff she's doing, but yeah, in terms of process, my part as co-director and editor is my part's done in that regard. And it's weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what do I do with my entire life now? <laughs> I will, I will, I will say one fun thing though. I can't give out any names because that would be a spoiler, but we are talking to some very interesting people um, who are interested in screening the movie at some at some really fascinating locations, but we probably shouldn't say more than that, but it's very exciting. So I think people are going to be hearing about it for a while, and our big hopes for it is that it'll be seen in sort of um, the kinds of places where policy change happens, yeah. where decisions are made. So it's very exciting, but yeah. And what about you, Frankie? Obviously, the torch has kind of been passed to you. Uh what have you got planned for the last shark sort of in the immediate future beyond the premiere? So actually this whole month, we have free screenings all across Cape Town. One of the big things that we really wanted to to make sure within South Africa, obviously there's a lot of inequality. So we wanted to make sure that this film and this, this educational film is accessible to anyone and everyone here and that there's no problem with being able to watch and learn from it. Um, So I'm doing a lot of different activities with a lot of different kids here, um, getting in some schools as well as like truly, um, yeah, screenings across Cape Town, across the Eastern Cape. 
I'm setting up virtual screenings across in, in KwaZulu Natal, uh, especially where the shark boards are, the shark nets are. Um, and I'm looking at extending, if we can get the funding, um, I will be extending my trip and actually going up there and making sure that not only I'm getting in the schools, uh, but also just really across all of the, the beaches where those nets are to make sure that people there can see them, can see the movie. That's amazing. It's so great that you've made this accessible as well to as many people, because the more people that see it, the more education, the more information, hopefully that turns the dial in the right direction in terms of shark perception is concerned. That's fantastic. And also like I've, you know, I grew up watching all the shark week stuff on discovery channel, all those things. I've always loved those shows. And I mean, I never thought I'd make a shark movie for sure, but I just feel like what we've come up with here because the quality of what the interview subjects is saying, like you know, one of the people in our movie is also Andre Hartman, who you might know of. Um, know one of the, yeah. yeah. So Andre is in there. I mean, Frankie got to hang out with Andre. He's such a great guy, and he, like the way he talks about the Great White, it just, I mean, it makes some, it, it almost makes you cry. Like he just loves the animal so much, and um, so I, we just. I just haven't seen a movie like this before and I don't even know how it got made to be honest. It's almost like when you do like you do a bunch of free writing and you're like, wow, I wrote that. How did I do that? That sounds good. So it's kind of like that. Like before we knew it, we had like when we sent out the rough draft to people, I mean, it was rough, no music, terrible visual, terrible sound, 45 minutes long. Now it's an hour and 21 and people cried when they saw it. They actually cried when they saw it. And I was like, whoa, what? Like, wow. And so it's because we're really trying to help restory our relationship with sharks in this film. And because of the people that we interviewed say it in such uh, personal ways that I think it really comes across in, in a much different way. A lot of movies, like I had a friend recently who worked at National Geographic and I hope she doesn't hear this because she might be offended, but she worked in National Geographic in the oceans department. And I was telling her that I was struggling with adjusting the audio because this is the first movie that I've ever done all the audio for and all the color grading. Normally, I hire that out. Oh, but we had a budget of zero, by the way. Everyone who has worked on this movie has done for zero dollars. None of us have made a penny, which means I, we didn't have a budget to have anyone better than me do the audio. So I was complaining to my friend about the levels. And she was like, oh, well, just mute what the people are saying and just show the shark footage. That's all anyone cares about is the underwater, beautiful footage. And I was like, oh, no, 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 that's not, that's not this kind of movie. This is very, very different. Um, and I think she's right. Most conservation films rely heavily on gorgeous 4K, beautiful, beautiful footage where the audience is like in awe and wonder. Um, this narrative is not that kind of a movie. It's, um, it's a it's a hit you in the hit you in the heart and mind kind of movie, not just like, wow, they're beautiful. Let's save them. So it's also a lot of investigative journalism mm -hmm. um, it's, it kind of plays off like that as well. So, yeah, anyway, well, speaking Sorry. to you both, it, it, no, 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 it's, no, no, it's, it's great because I think the thing is, it, again, it, it, if we're going to change the perception of these uh, creatures, it, you know, people like you are the gateway to that perception. You know, to the, to the real way we should be looking at these creatures and the way we should be appreciating them and then going, OK, actually, that's not what I thought it was. So now I need to take some kind of action to try and save these creatures before before they're gone. So what can people yeah. do beyond watching the movie? What can they do to help the, with this specific cause? Yeah, I think Frankie's got that question. <laughs> so I think it definitely definitely starts with with watching the movie and we're really excited because we've attached a QR code link not only at the end of the movie but on all of our merch um as well to make sure that people have somewhere to go and there we have free shark courses where people can learn more about sharks more like great shark documentaries to go and learn about we're going to be putting up a petition to not just to take the nets out because we don't want to cause any unemployment and this is a really like high funded organization within South Africa, but there are a lot of ways that they can transform and even increase employment and increase mm -hmm. education through this employment as well. Um, so we're promoting a lot of different alternatives that can be used, that should be used. Um, so we're trying to call for action in that way. 
and and yeah and then again just the community momentum because it's exactly what you said you know these policies that have just been in place for too long it's and so it just it, it's really that it's just it's time for a change and and the time to act is now you know I'm sure you know this, but the great white shark pop like global population hovers between 3,000 to 5,000. Yeah. And that is terrifying. And the fact that more people don't know about that is is equally as terrifying. So, you know, these shark nets alone are killing 20 to 30 great whites a year. And these great whites take 30 years to sexually mature. So we are like, I think when 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 we were making this movie, what really hit me, um, is that I was coming back to South Africa and that I'm doing all this work with kids. And not only are they growing up in the place that used to be the Mecca for great white sharks, like not only do they not know that and they'll never understand that, but they'll, like I could see, you know, we could see this species go extinct within our lifetime. Like that's extremely possible. And to to just stand by and watch that happen is is not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And- that's really well said, Frankie. Um, and then I think what I would add to that is that I always, so this is my fourth feature length documentary and I you know I always do conservation films. I mean, I've made a ton of other smaller things, but this is my fourth feature length. And I always ask myself, what's my motivation? Cause I've made them all for free. And I'm like, why am I doing this? Like <laughs> I'm going broke doing this, but um, I always make the movie for one person. That's what I always try to focus on. Like, what's all this effort about? If I can cause one person in the audience to think to themselves differently about their connection with the natural world, then that's the that's the dream for me. And so that's just what I've decided to do with film and video is try to help create that connection because I'm not ever pointing the finger at anyone. Um, I'm also one of those disconnected people. We all are when we're living in these square boxes and out of the woods, we're all sort of disconnected from things naturally by the way we live. Yeah. And so to me, when you ask, what can people do? My answer would be, let yourself be affected by the movie. Hmm. And for a lot of people, that's a good start because, you know, there's just so much, like there's never been a better time to get involved with conservation. There's so much to do. So um, I don't see things as hopeless. I see it as we just got to get more people involved you know so yeah well speaking yeah. to you both i mean if your if your film is as uh, compelling and engaging as, as you guys are i don't think you're gonna have a problem engaging and mobilizing you know the the, the there's not the next generation and the existing generation of, of shark fans i mean it's it's a truly inspiring thing you know not just to hear that you're tackling one particular cause head on but yeah. also that you've managed to do this with a bunch of really inspiring people who have basically given their time and their energy and their passion for free. And that's exactly kind of what, what we do at, at the Daily Jaws, which is why we take great pride in trying to juggle that line between, or straddle that line of love Jaws, but also love sharks. And we believe there is a coexistence there. And obviously that we get the chance to speak to, to fantastic people like yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so guys, thank you so much for taking some time out. I appreciate how close you are to the, the premiere. And uh, obviously, Frankie, we know that you probably like, I don't know, something ridiculous o'clock where you are. And you've been sitting there in the dark for 45 minutes now. So <laughs> um, we get it. I'm going to, I'm going to let you go. Um, but um, before um, I sort of sign off with my usual uh, sort of sign off, um, is there anything else you'd like to add? I mean, where can people find you? How can people find you, follow you, support yeah. you? Where can they watch the film? Tell us a bit about so- that. So it's going to be a bit, we want to wait till all the screenings are finished in, in South Africa before we put it on YouTube. Um, so what I would do is I would definitely, like, now that I have more time, Frankie, I'm going to start working on that newsletter that doesn't exist yet. So I would tell people to go to our website, thelastsharkdoc.com, and subscribe. And then soon, someone will start putting together the newsletter um, and then we can keep people apprised of exactly when the drop date is. But if you just follow our Instagram and our Facebook, that's another just easy place to find out when it's because we will obviously announce it to the world that mm-hmm. it's out there. Um, I would say that's the big thing. Also, we do have a GoFundMe. Um, and Frankie, if you just want to add what the GoFundMe, if they want to help support the work now, <clears throat> like 
we're we're at this point we're never getting uh paid and that's okay <laughs> but frankie's work could use some help frankie do you want to just chat real quick about your gofundme yeah our gofundme um <laughs> for our movie but yeah, I mean, what we're really funding for right now is to kind of just help me get across the coast so that I can do all these screenings. But what's been really cool and just so surreal is the fact that all of our venues, all of our sponsors, everything's been donated so far. Even my flight here was donated to to help me get here so that we could, you know, share this with South Africa. We are yeah. definitely focusing on screenings across South Africa first and education here first before we go international but what's been really cool is that there's been so much international interest already I mean Australia the UK Ecuador Mexico Egypt wow. because of that shark attack as well uh shark encounter Egypt because of that shark encounter as well thank you I, I know I know it's just it's it is a little late for me <laughs> um, yeah but yeah, so it's been super surreal. So yeah, also just follow on our socials because I have an amazing marketing team here that's been helping me so much. I, again, like just really passionate people who who saw the project and also jumped on to just help out for free. Um, and so to just help us with gas money and such to get from screening to screening. Um, yeah, follow the or if you can donate to the GoFundMe. If not, follow along the page and and support and continue to get educated and, and donate follow along. five dollars for every time you watch jaws yeah i i, I would be bankrupt <laughs> <laughs> but it's good shout uh guys thank you so so much again for taking some time out and and um to help spread the word about this really important work that you guys are, are doing what we'll do uh in the description guys i'm going to put a, a link to your website the gofundme and the social uh pages and the other links that might be relevant to your work um i'm going to sign off now so uh, again Great. if there's anything else that you want to add or just give a goodbye that would be fantastic well, I just uh, want to thank you, Ross. Like you, you reached out to us and said, literally, how can I help? And I was like, wow, what a stand-up guy. So thank you so much for your interest. It's a pleasure. It's an absolute pleasure and privilege as well. Yeah. Frankie, any last words from you? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm super just like my heart is like so warm right now. Thank you so much for for reaching out. I mean. We appreciate all the help and it was so wonderful to chat with you and it's always just so fun to to talk about the film and and see the momentum growing behind it and and yeah we really appreciate this talk and it's been really lovely to meet you and we can't wait to show you the film as well i can't wait to see it obviously we i've seen the trailer i've watched it a few times and it, it, it is it is an emotional watch it's not like you say like every other sort of shark documentary so i think it's it is going to do it's going to do the job. But viewers, what I'll do is I'll ask you to be the judge. I'd love it you to watch the trailer that we're going to put a link to. And then when the movie goes international, we'll be back in touch with Charlie and Frankie and we will be sharing uh, any sort of ways you can watch that because it's going to be absolutely worth your time. So as always, guys, I've been Ross over at The Daily Jaws. I will drink to your legs and I'll bid you a very fond farewell and adieu.